Uncle Rennie was ill the day the earth stood still, but he told us where we stand. And Flash Gordon was there in silver underwear. Claude Rains was the invisible man. Then something went wrong for Fay Ray and King Kong. They got caught in a cellular jam. Then at a deadly pace, it came from outer space. And this is how the message ran. Hi there, Dax here for another pre-Reagan science fiction. Last time, I told you about how dogs would manage the world after humanity died. So how about this time, we look at how cats would do it. Well, let's find out in Breed to Come. That's right, this book is about cats who become evolved and rule the world after humanity dies out. On the whole, Earth society is worthless. But they do have these things called antique rugs that are great for peeing on. Well, that's not entirely true. Cats aren't the only ones who evolved. Besides the people, what the evolved cats call themselves... Really? Fine. There are three other races in the book. And let's see if you can guess what the other three evolved from based on their names. There are the Barkers, the Tusked Ones, and the Rattans. That's right, they evolved from dogs, boars, and rats. So... Laboratory mice! Okay, so they aren't rats. But you come up with a better rat image. An even grimmer plot has been simmering in my great criminal brain! Y you didn't just... <laughs> what was that? Great, now we're gonna have Dr. Moriarty after us. Thanks. And no, I have no idea why the others are named after their characteristics, while the Rattans are a corruption of their animal name. Maybe it's because they revered their former masters more than the others? As the people refer to humans as demons. A demon! Uh, a monster! A beast! And this time, the animals aren't just wearing speech collars. What do these do, boy? Hey, would you cut that cradle contigo? I use that collar. What does she to talk with? I would be happy if you stopped. All except the tusked ones have evolved to a more humanoid form. And no, in this book, there's still no need to use this clip. All right, but you're so damned ugly. Thankfully. And humans and the evolved animals did coexist for a time. However, at the time, humanity was kind of violent and insane. You see, humans accidentally created a virus that turned the animals more anthropomorphic and turned the humans more animalistic. Yeah, about that. And Breed to Come also takes place in what I think is New York. It's never clearly stated. I did some research and found that Breed to Come and Commandi, The Last Boy on Earth, both were first published in 1972. So it's impossible to say if this book influenced Jack the King Kirby. So it's wholly possible that this book did influence him, and is thus indirectly responsible for Superman at Earth's End and Countdown to Final Crisis. Though I know it came out 39 years before something else. They are contaminated. But before we get into that, let's talk about the author of the book, who, like the author of City, won the coveted Grand Master Award and, like the author of The Brass Dragon, won the also coveted World Fantasy Lifetime Achievement Award. This author is Alice Mary Norton. Okay, fine. To be fair, by the time she wrote this, she had already legally changed her name to the pen name, Andre Alice Norton. You see... Andre Norton had a long and illustrious career, including well over a few hundred novels 
including 25 different series, including the Trillium series, which she wrote with fellow Lifetime Achievement Award winner and recent author on my show, Mariam Zimmer Bradley, started in the early 30s and continued to her death in 2005, containing many great works in both science fiction and fantasy. But that starting date should give you some indication why she took the pseudonym Andre Norton. And apparently sometimes Alan Weston and Andrew North. But Andre Norton is the one she legally changed her name to. Where did the name Andre come from? Why'd she feel the need to legally change her name? I don't know. Go ask Alice. I think she'll know. Can you remember anything? Mm hmm? You remember your name? <laughs> she probably got the name the same place the Bronte sisters got the names Kerr, Ellis, and Acton. Anyway, she was part of that original fraternity of pulp, science fiction, and fantasy writers from the 30s to the 50s, working on a penny a word for the likes of fantasy book or other worlds. You may notice I used the word fraternity there, meaning brotherhood. Because the predominant audience of science fiction and fantasy at the time were young white males, all of the authors were also young white males, even the ones that weren't. Okay, you can sleep late that day. Of course I can. God forbid the public ever finds out that Casey Hunter is a woman. I suppose I'm sleeping late that day, too. It's not personal, Benny, but as far as our readers are concerned, Benny Russell is as white as they are. Let's just keep it that way. And so Alice Norton became Andre Norton, which is why there's so few pictures of her until much later in life. Since the feeling of society in general, and quite frankly, the audience for science fiction, and especially fantasy, has changed so much in the passing decades. And like I mentioned in my Frankenstein review, Modern science fiction was invented by women. Before there was Asimov, Bradley, or even Sinek. Hell, before there was a Wells or a Verne. There was Mary Shelley and Jane C. Loudon. I know you've never heard of her and probably only know of her book because I mentioned in that same review, Mummy or Tale of the 22nd Century as it's actively impossible to find an unabridged copy of it. This is the only time it's been published in over a hundred years, and it's missing over 400 pages. But I've gotten way off topic. Andre Norton is now revered for the gender that she once had to cover up. You see, she's not only known for being the first woman to win the science fiction Grand Master Award, but also, she is the first woman to win the Fantasy Gandalf Grandmaster Award. Which, of course, makes her a Grandmaster multiple times over. She is called the Grand Dame of Science Fiction and Fantasy by many biographers. So, let's look at this work by Grandmaster Andre Alice Norton about kitties going to war. Those are bunnies. And, like I said, they're not really cats anymore, and saying they're at war is kind of misleading. There's no active battles going on. The people maintain a truce with the Tusked Ones as they're herbivores, and so they're not competing for food. Communicating with each other with a complex gestural language as neither can speak the other's tongue. Well, you said it, Chewie. The people and the barkers, however, are both carnivores and thus have to vie for the same hunting ground and sometimes fight like, well, yeah. And I don't think I need to explain how the people and the ratans interact. to the actual story. 